Live from Las Vegas at midnight, BrotherLoveRadio.com. Good evening, everybody. It's the Brother Love Radio on WBKEVegasRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have special guests, Preston Parker, Preston, Matt Dreads, Dreads, baby. Uh, wait a second. Selfish, can you, you want to speak in the mic over there? We got Steven over there. Uh, Aaron Roberts is in the house. Shahid Brown, my co host. And uh, tonight, before we get started, we have a show tradition, or we're going to start a show tradition. So, everybody, we have uh, a show toast. Show tradition. So, if you have a cup, if you have a drink. It's a show tradition. Uh, we're going to have. Say, uh, to, to everybody here that showed up. Heads up, up heads up, heads up, uh, heads up. Thank you guys for showing Salud. up. Salud. Cheers. We're all going to have a beer or a drink or something that uh, inebriates us. All me. right, you guys. WBK Vegas Radio. Hold on a second. Let me drink this. Ah, shit. Ice cold beer. All right. So There's a great on. movie called How Beer Saved the World. Okay. Anybody hip to that? Never seen I it. Not yet. How beer saved the world. I haven't seen that yet. Everything in the world. Refrigeration. Only so we can have beer. Sounds good to me. Beer. 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 I'm trying to figure out where that music's coming from, you guys. All right. Brother Love Radio, which our special guests. Um, so let's start with Preston Parker. Preston, thank you very much for showing up. We were just hanging out at Hooters, uh, Hooters Hotel and Hooters Bar. We were drinking some beers over there, eating some hot wings. You didn't think I'd show up? No, I knew you would show up. Come on now. But I, you know, it's pouring us all. It's a tiny bit skeptical. We got some music on Justin. If you're in the house, we need to turn this off. I'm not sure where this is coming from, but. Sometimes Nobody we have here. technical difficulties. Nobody it might here. be caused Nobody by the beer. Off. The beer. Hooters is Nobody a wonderful establishment in Las right. Vegas. Okay. I saw some really nice girls out there today. I think I wanted to touch some Hooters as oh, I was drinking yes. my beer. All right, so thank you. Uh, yes, Selfish just hooked me up uh, with some knowledge, and, you know, I didn't have my program ready to go, the music was on, and I, nobody was hearing anything, but fuck them. I'm here with Preston Parker. What's up? What's up? A really good friend of mine, um, and uh, we met a, a few years back. Um, it was like uh, Tupac meets Biggie, okay, <laughs> East Coast and West Coast, but nobody versus anybody. You know, um, I fell in love with this, with, with this young man. I can call him a young man, because I got me beat by at least five years, I think. Yeah, I don't know, So, uh, we're Not both in Vegas. Are you? Are you? I think it's yeah, more like 10 or 15. God damn. Man, I'm, I'm the Yoda in here. Jesus, Freddy. All right. So uh, if anybody has questions for Preston, chime in at any time. But this is an OG, original East Coast, Miami, Florida, I think. Bang Bus, is that correct? Bang Bus. Yeah, Bang Bus is uh, one of the sites. Okay. Bang Brothers. Yeah, Many yeah, good nights with Bang Bus. Thank you. The good years. Yeah. So, if you wouldn't mind, would you share a little bit, or a lot of it, really, about how the East Coast developed and really took the whole world by surprise, the West Coast is included? You're talking about porn, right? Yes, porn. Definitely. Well, when I, uh, I tripped on a rock and I, I met some guys from Bang Bros, which back then, it was really no name. It was just a bunch of websites. Okay. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, internet was brand new back then, and everybody in the West Coast was still thinking they were going to sell VHS. Right. You know, they their market was all the porn stores. So when we came along, it was like we had the whole internet. I mean, we put a 50-second trailer out, and okay. it was like free porn. Right. You know, and then you got to see another one. Free another porn. One. And another one, and before you know it, it's like, let's subscribe to this. Let's see what it's all about. So what what year did you guys, or did you get on board with uh, the Bang Bros and the Bang Bus concept? Well, I came a little later. I'm, I could honestly tell you I'm about, I was six months late from being a percentage holder, which, fuck, bro. 
That sucks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was good, man. It was good. I mean, when I came along, it was it was it was still brand new. Okay. But it was hot. I mean, I remember holding a camera in public, and everybody would come to me because it was a big camera, and everybody right. just wanted to see what was up. So I played I played along with everyone on the street. You know, and I, I just, I tried my best to get as many girls in the van as I could. Okay, I have, I have, I, I have a question. Sure. Is it real? Is what real? Is Bang Bus real? Of course it's real. 100%. Whew. You know, uh, you can't go a year without hearing at least one, two, or three times in a mainstream movie or television show, uh, Bang Bros or Bang Bros being mentioned. Uh, I mean, Bang Bros. it was just, you know, somehow they, we were on everybody's computer, everybody's. If you owned a computer and you wanted to see porn, you know, you were probably getting it from us or we, you were getting it from Reality Kings back, back in the day. So there was no competition. It was, it was just, that was it. Right. So, I mean, my days were great because I guess there was a lot of money coming in. So my budget during the day was big. I got to do whatever I wanted. I mean, it was fun. Can you tell us about some of the sites that you were involved with with the, with, the, with, uh, with Bang Bros? Yeah, uh, Bang Bus, of course. Uh, which you know, <laughs> I've got to I got to throw a shout out to Dirty Sanchez because he's the original director for it. Okay, yeah. I came in. I was I was talent, and then we had a driver. His name is his. You know, we called him Ugly. Right. And <laughs> so, you know, we tried our best really to. To pick up girls. Drive, but... ugly. <laughs> yeah, no, he... <laughs> dude's cool. Dude's cool. And uh, it was a good time back then because we didn't know what we were getting into. And we didn't know how big it was going to get. So, Dreads, say hi. What's up? My Is... mic good? I don't know. I'm trying to get you out there. So, speak into the mic again. Hello, hello, hello. You going? Go. I can hear it now. All right, cool. So, Drez, you're, you're probably the youngest guy on the panel. Actually, you are the youngest guy on the panel. You're a director for Porn Pros. Absolutely. Tell me how old you were when you first saw Bang Bus. You know, it's funny. I was just talking to Preston about this outside. I was like, I never knew that was him until I met him. And then it's kind of funny in porn now. Once you've met these people, you don't really like the porn anymore. No offense, yeah. Preston. It's just like when you, once you know them, it's just a different ball game. Right. Because I think a few of my favorite porns have like been ruined because I met the performers. So... But, uh, yeah. It's like watching your brother. When I saw a friend. Exactly. But when I, when I first started watching porn, it was like on dial-up. So you like have to sit there all day to wait for an image to load. <laughs> now you can jerk off. Do, do, do. And we, we've come so oh, far in like 10 years on like high-speed internet and the right. porn and shit. And now all the piracy and shit, but that's another topic. But What about you, Freddie? First time bang bus. Man, you know what? I didn't watch too much porn growing up. It was more like magazine shit, you know okay. what I'm saying? But, you know, as you get a little older, you start watching all this shit, and it's pretty crazy. I'm kind of feeling what Matt was saying, because it was the same shit for me. Once you start seeing certain people, you're like, oh, what the hell, I can't watch this shit, you know? Live is different, because you're working, like you're doing your thing, it's not as bad, but to see it on, you're like, oh, what the hell is this shit? You know what I'm saying? I can't watch this more. Yeah, yeah, that sucks for everyone. Yeah, I, I tell yeah. everyone that meets me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry we met. I, yeah, just, I ruined it for you, and I would be able to jerk off. And then you beat him with your dick. No, no but it, you know, like... Trip over this shit. I was raised in a small town in, in, uh, in Iowa, and uh, I'm talking, we had a big class of 26. After that, it was like 15. Like, it was small. And one of the my friends that I grew up with, three days after my first video on Bang Bus, called me and said, no, dude, no fucking way, you're my favorite website. And now I can't jerk off to it anymore. Thanks a lot, you ruined it for me. Because it's just, I mean... Did you, did you make him subscribe anyway? Like, listen, man. Uh, no, nah, he knew me. Once okay. you know somebody, it's like, it, it, it sucks. Yeah. It's like, get out of my porn, dude. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> they tell someone, and then they tell ten people, and then everybody knows. It's just like one of those things. Right. Um, can we pass the mic over to uh, Aaron, Aaron Roberts over there? 
Any uh, any fond bank bus memories? Did you, did you have television at well, that time? Uh, I was like Freddie. I had magazines. I actually had two big Rubbermaid like storage plastic containers. Oh, I was full. Like, once you started saying Rubbermaid, oh. I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I, I was just like, said I magazines, a, but I, I okay. <laughs> I had a I serious collection. Containers. He's talking about. like, but uh, bank bus like it was probably you know once it initially got its its uh, recognition in the first few years. I started hearing about it in mainstream. First few months. Things. Yeah, I, I started hearing about it in mainstream uh, stuff. So like, there was years and years and years I heard about it but never seen it. Right. So, uh, yeah, it really had a big crossover. Well, on the West Coast, I can tell you, you, you affected the rates and the mentality of the female performer. They came into the West Coast asking for three, four thousand bucks or whatever it is. I'm getting this all day long on the East Coast. And we're like, you know, uh, you might want to go back to the East Coast out here. We're paying the normal rates, etc. We're not gonna, you know. West Coast took forever to get on the internet. Yeah, they did. Didn't, yeah, they weren't computer people. They were, you know, DVD people. They're very stuff. Chess people making money for a long time that way. Yeah. Yes. You know, if I had a dollar for every person I heard say, "I want to get a bus and go drive around and pick up bitches." I'd be a millionaire right Well, now. what is it, 10 years later, that taxi that taxi cab site from London is going off? Yeah. Like, too little, too late, buddy. It well, was done. The, yeah, the problem now is you've got a camera hanging outside of a big, creepy van. Everybody runs away now. You know, back in the day, they were like, what is this? What's going it's on? It's like Uncle Rico and Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think maybe if I'm wrong, Shahid has a different maybe... Uh, perspective on running into porn people because uh, we had a really good time at AVN 2016 and um, that convention was pretty fucking cool I heard some pros and cons about it but I had a great time I was there with Shaw and uh, also John Rowdy John yeah why is Roddy John so quiet, right? He's <laughs> filming you on his iPhone. Nobody can hear you throw up a peace sign. It's even like tonight when you're when you're hanging out with someone like Preston Parker and you and you've seen him for a long time. You've grown up with him. You've learned styles and techniques from him. You That's know, right. and then you get to hang out and you drink a beer with the guy. You know, when you're at the at the AVN Awards and you get to hug people who you might have spent a moment with, it's it's cool. You know, you're holding them and. It's way better than, it's, it's the coolest thing for me. I, I got a smile ear to ear. I saw everyone I've ever jacked off to. Uh, right. You know, it's, just, it's the shit. It's realer than any ABC TV show special I've ever seen. Yeah. Nice. Aaron, Aaron Roberts wants to get on the mic there. Will you pass that over to him, sir? You know, I, one thing I, I've had is uh, you meet people in the business, and you're like, they look familiar. But you can't really place them. Right. And then, like, you know, you're cruising the internet, you know, about to jack off, and you're like, oh. You find that old video, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Speaking of old videos, yeah. did you ever I have sex with anybody yeah, that you yeah, had a crush on before you got in the business? The yeah. Did, did that ever happen? Did you ever have one of those oh. weird fantasies? What do you mean? Okay. He's like, he's like, saying, so, like, like, there's, like 12, right 13. before you got in the business, you see some girl that either you used to jack off to or you love seeing on porn, <laughs> and then you get into the business, and, all of, a sudden you're and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm banging this girl that kind I of used like... to watch myself. You guys want to know the truth. When I of came, course, all the time. When I came, you the truth. When I came <laughs> along, internet was brand new. Like, okay. If I did that, it was maybe for two years, but I didn't because I, I, I didn't have a computer back then, so... I mean, I was I was just moving to Florida, and I was just uh, I was always partying. I was never, I mean, I jerked off, of course. <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, I, I uh, you know, Bang Bros was brand new to me. Even there when wasn't I, a special girl that yeah in the industry gone with before. No, it, it was special it. once I met him. Yeah. Like I found love any, every day. You weren't beating any girls a day with your dick recently. <laughs> <laughs> every every day I would come to work and. You know, I'd just be surprised. I'd be like, wow, where'd you find her? Right. Well, especially since you guys were finding all the amateurs and stuff. I think still today, I think the East Coast has a leg up on the West Coast as yeah, far as man, pulling the talent. There's something I mean, in the water. You guys, you know, out there really, really do a good Florida. job. Yeah. They grow them in Florida. It's crazy. Yeah. Caribbean Express. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, it's uh, a crop. I so, I mean, let me get to uh, 
to Matt Dreds over here as a, as a young director over for Porn Pros, Shoot Passion HD, and a bunch of the websites that they that they own. And um, how's it going back? Because you started as a PA for me here in Vegas. Represent. And uh, you, you came up really quickly. You obviously have skills and a background in, in college and film and, and so forth. What's it like shooting Preston? What's it like shooting porn? Do you fall in love or are you over it? You know, it's, it's just, it's your job. Like, right. You know, I don't look at it anymore as like shooting two people having sex. It's just like, it's just what I do to make a living. And like, it's it's funny, all the like on camera stuff we do, off camera stuff, all the little subtle jokes. Probably some of the funnest times I had were on your set, Daniel. <laughs> You've taught me so many things. You're like you're like the Godfather, the, the man of all knowledge. Good like, father. I gotta put some cotton put, in my mouth. Put that, I need to do fill some. Fill that douche with water and put it in the fridge. Yeah. It will stop the bleeding. Like stuff like that. You yeah. just have you're like the go-to guy. I always have a solution. And uh, yeah, I definitely learned so much from you when I was your PA. That's mad. But uh, Obi Wan's. Yeah, man, it's 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 tough. Oh. You know, there's some days where you don't want to do it, and there's other days where things go smoothly. But other than that, I mean, so far it's it's been a great experience. Have you had sex with any of the talent, any of the girls that come through? No comment. You have to. You got to tell us. Tell us, dude. You, do you can't handle the truth. truth. Hey, he said no comment because he doesn't want to say. Didn't ask for names. I've had my people <laughs> played with a few times. Yeah. Hey. There's nothing wrong with that. And of course, if it did that. happen, it would have been outside of work. For a couple exactly. bucks. Exactly, exactly. You know, for a couple so bucks. On my own time. Hey, yeah, on your own time, like maybe in a different town, but like... Porn, pros, porn pros has you guys so scared to, to take no. a girl out. It's not really funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not even allowed to talk to the girls unless yeah. you're shooting. Well, like, Preston has everyone dead silent in the room. Yeah. Well, they do come up. No. Those girls cause problems, so... Uh, yeah, they cause for problems. For good reason. Yeah. yeah. Very good reason. <laughs> right, so, so because... Any girl in the industry is just like any motherfucking girl in the whole entire world. They're the same shit. They just do something different. They just have a different job. Just because a girl's in the industry does not make her insane that she's going to take advantage of you. Like, that's fucking stupid. A girl's a girl. You know how far you can go with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like... But those girls, man, you know, sometimes they could, you know, they could do something like, you know, you hang out with them, chill with them, and then, uh, you know, they could bitch to their agent and say, hey, man, he said, uh, I like, fucked them, you know, they booked me, and, like, you like, you know, that could, that could cause problems. Now you're fired? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? You're fired, you know, or, you know, you, you're been demoted reputation, to, you know, to the like, editing department? You know, it's just like, uh, you know, working at, like, Walmart. But, uh, you know, every every no girl's story is the same. I need money. Man, I don't care if I work in the mail parts. room. Yeah. I don't care if I work in the mail room as long as I work in there. You know, I'm not really caring where I work. Don't demote me. Just yeah. you know, you know, fraternization. In, in the mail, you know? the mail room. The mail room. <laughs> <laughs> the mail room. Uh, I, I, I quit. <laughs> well, let me put Francis on real quick. I gotta call him my Francis because that's how I met him. That's how I know him. But he's gonna introduce himself by his DJ name and give us a little bit about history. And he adjusts the way females look through editing and, and, and makes me look good at what I do. Francis, please talk to, to, to us about porn and your experience and uh, how you got on board with porn pros, please. Yo, man, yo. First of all, I like to say I'm high as hell. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Too high as hell. Smoking that good shit, you know what I'm saying? But, um... I mean, I used to like cartoon porn, you know what I'm saying? It goes way back, you know what I'm saying? While y'all was watching Bugs Bunny and shit, I was watching like... Tom and Jerry. Uh, you know Tom and Jerry. I was Simpsons. watching Japanese Pepe animation. Pepe Le Pew. You know what I'm saying? I was watching that shit, and then, you know, I saw Deep Throat, the movie Deep Throat, you know, yeah. 1970 movie. Most successful porn. I was impressed by that. Changed You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was the only movie that I seen like that, and everything else was just regular porn, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, the way I found this job, you know what I'm saying, I was just like, shit, it's paying good, you know what I'm saying? And it's, what's funny is my lady found it for me, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. That's the funny part. Whoa. She found it for me, and she said it to me. I, I laughed when I, when I saw the subject, because she was like, this is a job for a porn company. And I laughed, and then I was like, damn, they're paying a lot. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Yeah, actually, <laughs> you, know, you, you interviewed for uh, the place I work for. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Before, and I, it was this other place, yeah, right. It was another yeah. place where they was talking about, um, 
It was some dude saying he had commercials to shoot yeah. for the, the lawyer. Glenn you know Lennon. what I'm saying? Gre what's his name? Glenn Lennon. Yeah, Greg yeah. Lennon. You know, show me some commercials. Like, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, I can do that and everything. But I'm like, I got to take a test. So I did yeah. the same editing test. Right, the same editing like, test. Yeah. You know, you know I you'd rather see some pussy I than some lawyer shit. I just spoke major weed, bro. <laughs> oh, shit, man. It was two voices going on at the same time, and I'm high. I couldn't concentrate. But, uh, <laughs> pussy or lawyer. So do you still like the deep throat scenes that we shoot? Um... Or is it corny to you? I mean, like, what's your perspective on when you yes, get you something in the can yes, raw and then you have to edit it? I'll tell you real quick, and then I'll let you answer it. All right. <laughs> Fred, a deep throw is, is a, hey, a hey, a deep throw is a deep throw. You know what I'm saying? True. Like, I haven't seen a real deep throw in that's, a long time. That's like, true. That's what I can say to that but shit. But how long is a long time? Well, it, like... A long time, like yeah. years, like how long is a long day? Before yeah. when you used to see a dude, you're like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? Now that you're like, really, like that's not even cool and shit. I mean, I agree with you, but you know, as an editor, I see everything that comes. Well, through, no, you know? I've seen, I've seen a few recently, that have right? Actually, surprised the shit out of me, where I'm like, there's no way that little girl just did that shit. That's yes. True. yes, so yeah, I have been there. Okay, right. But, but it used to, used to be so like many, consistent. Well, now, 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 now it's like a fucking diamond in the rough to find one that can do it. Every That's true. It, before it was yeah. like, holy shit, like what the hell's going? on? I didn't even think girls can do that. And then it just like died out. Like there's there was like why, no more why do you think it died out? I can tell you right now. Well, please yeah. do. It's simple. It's because uh, you know porn pros goes for the young, brand new girls. It's true. That's that. true. They you're don't not, know what not, the fuck they well, right. you're, 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 you're not hiring. You're not. But you're not. You're not hiring like experience. girls that could deep throat right. to do the site. You're hiring new girls that you could cross your fingers Whoever and hold. Yeah. The, 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 the absent-minded. They're going to be the next Keisha right. Gray. You know, these yeah. chicks These chicks are absent-minded. They're so. actually uh, learning <laughs> hands-on. They, right. they have no yeah. prior training, no, you know, right. it's like no, no experience yes. necessary. You know what I'm They come dodgers. They dodge <laughs> come. You know what I'm saying? When they see <laughs> the come, they act like, you know, how you would see. how The like, same way you would react to a shark in the water. That's how they react when they see the cum and shit. It's like you know hot lava, like they're trying to dodge it. Pretty much, it's trying it's to dodge the shit. Like, why are you trying to dodge it? Like, you like signed up for this Just shit. ruin the whole movie. This is what everybody was watching for. Pretty much. You yeah. gag on it, you throw up, whatever. You know, yeah. it's right. in my eye. Yes. I mean, the best porn stars know if it gets in their eye, just go with it. Yeah. So what we're talking about is... I can swear, is, right? Uh, yeah, you can say whatever hey, you want. Hey, we've been so, swearing the whole shit. The yeah, whole yeah, so, so, so in business, what's the best pussy? What's the rule? The best pussy. New pussy. Clean, Clean new pussy. pussy. Clean. 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 Hundred percent. No, 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 it's about new. So well, new pussy. You know, right. new. you know the the company's smart enough to know you you can't put the same faces on a site that you could see a hundred times on every other site. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so there you go. I mean, you gotta you you gotta try and find deep throat girls, but that's true. Yeah, but you'd rather have an amateur that's never shot before. So that's basically what Preston and everybody's talking about to the fans is the difference between an amateur and a pro and the value that they bring to the company that's shooting them. And you got to know what you're getting into when you're hiring these young people versus the veterans that have been around two to three years. And they can all be young people by average standards, 25 and under. But anybody that's been in the business or the last two years... Is a veteran. As we're talking about the females, I think. And but I mean, I mean, it makes sense. You know, you got that handful of models that are right. professional. Yes. And they're porn stars because they work hard, they yes. work out, and uh, they show up to work on time. And then there's the rest. Right. But besides that, I mean, nothing else sells unless you're a new girl. Yeah. Because right. I mean, who wants to keep seeing Phoenix Marie? I, I don't even know how. Whoa. I do. People keep no, going into you know, like, okay. But, uh, I mean, I've seen her get fucked like 500 times. Like, how many more times do I have to watch her get fucked? Right. These new girls are, you know, it's like uh, the masturbator can feel like he has a chance with her. It's the girl next door, you know. It's, uh, you know, it, it's it's not some unobtainable uh, fantasy, you know. I mean, the value yeah. on both of those two things, let me just say, you know, and I know Phoenix has been around for a long time. I think I shot her third scene in the industry. Um... You know, the porn star is for the guy, in my opinion. And this, I could be wrong, so if there's a fan out there, call in 702-601-7330. Let us know your feelings about this. But the porn star girl, the Phoenix Marines, that 
do a million scenes and still remain relevant and make their money or around for the guys that fantasize about getting turned out about a, a woman or a girl that does things that in their life, their average everyday life, is probably not ever going to happen or maybe has happened once. Yeah. Okay, and they're, we're just chasing the dragon, you know. Um, and then the amateur girl, like Aaron Roberts pointed out, is the, the girl next door, that classic playboy model where we feel like maybe we might have a chance to fuck this person. But, yeah, and, and her inexperience, too, is also attractive. You know? Right, that is... The innocence, the innocence that these girls have. You know? Right, and I don't know about what Preston's take is on it, but, you know, when I first started in the industry uh, several years back, the, the two types of females that were pushed upon me, this was going back to my club magazine days. I have magazine experience. That's how old I am. Yeah, yeah, that's and awesome. back to anabolic, uh, when the Ali anabolic was relevant, was that teens and tits were the two things that were, were selling. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. right after that, and, and, it, and it showed through Lexington Steel, was big black cocks, okay? Wow. And those were the three things that you knew if you had in your stable, you could make yeah. money off. Now, and then Ass Parade came out, then it was over. Uh, uh, barely it legal. All, it was all about ass. Which is good because yeah. let's talk about that because barely legal. you know, uh, you know, for you know, also being a masturbator for a long time before porn. You know, I started watching porn when I was in the third grade. You know, when VHS just came out and the the, the, the VCR and, and the Betamax were like six, seven hundred bucks, and one kid's father on the block had. The, 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 the apparatus with like the 10 films were at the time and you the actual video stores were around way before Blockbuster um, and I love I just loved watching porn back in the day you know with hairy pussies all, and all that stuff and that's probably probably where I got the hairy pussy stuff from but I mean Bush is making a comeback yeah I hope it is Preston right. time yeah, we, didn't, time we didn't watch we didn't we didn't watch um, ball headed pussy porn back in the day you know what I'm saying I didn't even really know that shit. Every pussy I ever seen had hair on it too. You know, like you can. My you, early to mid twenties, and I started. You know what I'm saying? But that's because you a player, man. You can find yeah. any. You Every can, you can find how am I anything. I'm this room, and everyone's getting silent. What is it? You can find anything <laughs> on the internet from right. back in the day. You yeah. just add vintage to it, yeah, and you'll see that really nothing's changed. I mean, they they had everything back then. Maybe you you didn't have as much to choose from. I mean, right. back then they didn't have it on the internet yet. Right. But, but we were talking about ass parades, so I'm sorry to yeah, no, 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 segue but, out of that, but I would like to get back to the butts thing because you guys did a lot. Actually, let's talk about a lot of things you guys brought to the forefront. Let's start with ass parade. Well, I mean, you know, it was it was simple. We, we just came out with the fetish. Right. And then we decided, okay, that's going to be one website. And then we come out with another fetish. And then, you know, you make a website for, for every fetish that we, we thought was hot. Right. And that was it. Like, whatever your dire need is, you go after the fetish. Right. Switch the girl out. That's it. Do it over and over again. I remember when Ass Parade was actually Butt Parade. Okay. You know, the owner was, uh, he didn't think he could market the word ass. And then as soon as we switched it to Ass Parade, it was a wrap. Like, it was. <laughs> right. Top of it the was insane. <laughs> ass parade. Do you know what popular magazine well, was? Well, because you have your well, butt, well, and then you have you. your ass. Right, that's true. <laughs> true enough. Do you remember what the popular magazine, do you remember what the popular magazine uh, for the for asses was? Okay, like, so like the popular the, magazine for asses, and this is going probably 10 years prior uh, to East Coast internet porn, you know, uh, like he said, nothing really changes. Preston was pretty accurate. Um, was Buttman. You're talking about the original That's John Stagliano yeah. and Rock was a Freddy, the OG guys from back in the day, maybe the late 70s, Buttman. early 80s, and, and you I, had and to go to a sex store to get that wall-to-wall -wall sex magazine. You never find that on a I had a store. box of Buttman. Yeah, I think I still have a couple of those. And I, I, I still to this day, like if I, if I film a girl with a nice ass, yeah, I mean, those were the perfect ass angles. He he had it down yeah. pat, yeah. and then Why we just switched just... it over and, and put it in video. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had I had some in my collection also. The Batman's were awesome. Now, Jeffrey. another big deal with with the Preston and the East Coast thing that a lot of people forget about 
a lot of people might not realize is that the term MILF and cougar really came, now I don't know where they came from, but I can tell you for a fact that the East Coast blew that the fuck up. And if it wasn't for you guys on the East Coast, nobody over the age of 28 would be in the business today, okay? So anybody of MILF status owes it to the East Coast poor and internet because prior to that, I'm telling you, Sounds if you were like 28, that. you were done. The movie uh, American like Pie, did dead. that spark it? Like Stifler's mom? I'm not sure, but you guys would have, uh, you know. Uh, am I wrong you know, about that? Jesse's mom sparked it. Jesse's mom. What year did that come out? It's like 2002, like early 2000s maybe? Aaron, you're the right, you're the right genius over here. I'll tell you, Sad, I used to watch a lot of Milf Hunter. Was that, that was down in Florida, right? Yeah, that was, uh, oh, that was our it? sister company. Yeah, that shit was great. Like, I was Reality Kings. Reality porn. Yeah. I think it was pretty successful, too. 8th Street Latinas in the VIP. Uh, you know, they uh, they had a lot They have a lot of sites, too. Captain Stabbing, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I remember On the boat? Too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's definitely been a, a fetish for a long time. I mean, especially with that movie with Dustin Hoffman back in the day, you know? It seems like every generation has a some sort of MILF or cougar... Uh, no, that's true, but I can tell you from the DVD days that I was in, nobody had a DVD line like that. Wow. Nobody. You know, it was... You, you, in fact... Man, MILFs will never get old. No, I mean, not now. Yeah. Women right. are right. just... The older they get, the better it is, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's just better. Yeah. So I take it you like working with the MILFs more? The older the berry, the sweeter the... Press it hot for teacher. <laughs> yeah, I don't... MILFs? <laughs> I mean, my flavor, you know, after being with over, I don't know, over 3,000. Over 3,000? Yeah, wow, yeah. I don't know, maybe more. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, Almost wait, hey, you okay, man? You okay? Yeah. Hey, hey. Every, every day. Almost man. as much as me? <laughs> Damn. Hey. Are you okay? No. It's not a, <laughs> hey, it's not all a blessing. I mean, I got to, I got to think. My brain is all fucked up now. I mean, I got, I got to think of new shit every free. day. You even got paid for it. Still. How did you even get in, Preston? Did you just like, I got a big dick. Hire me. Hire me. No, that's yeah. not at all how it happened. Yeah. In fact, how'd that go down? I, I, I never, I don't know, man. I never looked at my dick and thought I had a big dick. I just never took the time to even think that direction. Right. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I didn't look at anyone else's dicks. I, I, and, for, and for the record, by the way, to the what fans the out there, gazer? that is very, very common with all the performers because we don't do dick comparisons like women do boob comparisons. Yeah, that's true. Comparisons. Well, no, say, hey, not only that, yeah. but, you know, times have changed. I mean, I didn't have, I didn't get on the internet to look. Right. You know, now you have kids in high school that are like, Dreaming of being porn stars when yeah. you get out of high school. You know, I didn't dream of that. Right. I, I tripped on a rock. You know, I'm like, yeah, if, it just it, if you want to, happened. we'd actually like to hear how that how that works because everybody has a really cool story on how they get into the industry. You know, we don't, like you said earlier tonight at the bar, we don't wake up one day and say, hey, I want to be a porn star. We usually want to be a fireman or a police officer or whatever the, the dream is. But nobody, nobody not normally says, not, at least not back then. Yeah. So, so tell us the story. How, how did you get in Shit, it? well, I was hungry back then. I mean, I was young. I just, I just moved to Florida. I was working three jobs. And uh, I don't want to say exactly how it happened. But uh, okay. long story short, you know, I was offered money to go bang a girl out. Okay. And I did it with ease. I didn't think it would be hard. And okay. I guess... Directors were like, wow, dude, you had no problem. Like, it was like a victory or something. Right. You know, I was like, no, just give me the money and I'll come back tomorrow. Right, right. <laughs> and then I got tired of the directors. So right. I, I just told them, give me the camera and I'll shoot it myself. So I, I went from, from, and that's how I started POV sites. Okay. Big mouthfuls back in the day. Right. That was like, uh, that was great. I didn't have to talk to anybody. I just took the camera, I got the hottest girl, Yeah. and I just went into a room and fucked her. It's just great. Well, I gotta ask, I gotta ask, because it, it was a few years back that you did that. A few years back. Um, did you fuck her more off camera or on camera? That's a good question. Because I know how POVs go down. There's well, a lot it, of interesting things that happen on the POVs. It's not fun holding a camera, girl, right? 
it's not fun holding yeah, the camera. When you're trying to concentrate on fucking and then trying you to can't grab her with both time. hands. Right. It's it's like it just depends on the vibe. Okay. You know, if I if the girl felt me out, right. we would pause the camera. I started shooting threesomes. I I would beg the uh, the boss man to just start giving me two girls at a time. We had the budget. Okay. Because having two girls at the same time. I mean, it's just, oh, that's it. People ask me all the time what my favorite sex is. It's threesomes, that's it. Every single time. One girl on the balls, one girl on the shaft. That's it. If you don't like one of them, you got the other one. Hey, no, what, no. What, what you, boss you like, doesn't, I like both of them, I would think. What boss doesn't like think an employee that has for extra work? Well, at least we know who here hasn't had a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> I had a threesome once. How, the how, Coast, much, uh, how much did it run you? Hold on, can you get a little bit? On Robert's over here? So, did the East Coast also uh, make a big impact with the POV? Things go in phases. I mean, we, yeah. could, we could talk about presence. I know that in, a, in, in Anabolic, a, a guy by the name of Mike John was doing POVs yeah. for a long time. That was what he was doing. So, The East Coast is all about gonzo. If anybody knows what that is, it's just where... The cameraman also has character. He's either talking or he's part of the scene. And so that, that opens it up for anything. Right. It opens it up for POV. That opens it up for uh, anything fun. Right. You know, it, like we said, the West Coast, everything was DVD and, and VHS, so That's everything right. had to be shot professionally. Yeah. So, I mean, we shot so much more than they did because we... We didn't care about like the quality of the videos as much. Right. You know, just dump it on the internet and people will buy it. No, yeah. and they did, you know, and uh, you know, I think at that time when you guys were, were really making an impact, I think I was uh, just getting started over at New Sensations. And you know, and all the D V D companies were doing the same thing. You had your teen line or a couple of teen lines, your solo line, your girl girl line, you know, this line big tit line, etc. And uh there was a little real lack of creativity, so when you guys came aboard, it changed the playing field. It do that doesn't happen very often. I think the last time, uh, from my experience, the DSLR brought on XArt, which uh, changed a little bit of the passionate thing. You know, you, 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 you came on board with us doing the passion HDs, and that's a, but, you know, things, every, every eight, nine years, things change in the adult industry. Well, what do you guys think is next? I I virtual, virtual reality, probably. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, that's what I was... L live cam stuff, I think, yes. Dreads, no, Dredd said it. That's what I was going to say. Well, I mean, like, around. all virtual reality now is, like, it's, like, all just POV. Yeah. Like, you put well, the headset well, on POV. Yeah, you know, POV but brought the interactive. You know, that's, it's that. not, that's not real virtual reality yet. Right. Yeah. Like, and like, it's expensive now, too, you know. Are you going to buy buy I've seen it. headset it's, to jerk off? It's unreal, and... Nobody's even touched it yet. Nobody's right. scratched it. And cams are, are really popular, you know, because uh, they, they can one-on-one -on -one interact with the girl, you know, they can cam to cam, you know. Um, I think it's going to move into a more interactive thing. Where uh, Well, well the, the, the exciting thing about virtual reality is the way... You guys watch football, I'm guessing. You know how they'll, they'll have, like, a receiver that'll jump in the end zone, catch a pass for a touchdown? And they'll switch camera angles, and it'll look like they do like a 3D, like a uh, uh, view of it, and you can yeah. see them coming down with the ball from another angle. Right. All right. That's two cameras. Times that by you know, imagine eight cameras. Right. You're gonna be able to, like, the, it's insane, like, the way it's gonna look with virtual reality, where. Not only is the girl coming to you. Right you can actually go to the girl right it's and you can check her out from different angles and ways that you can right now it's right. going to be it's it's definitely i think it's going to be yeah. big yeah because how many times are you look up, up her skirt you know what I'm how, how many times like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah i did the oculus at ces unreal like you can't see your hands you got the glasses on you're looking down at your feet they're not there just Incredible, and if they can incorporate yeah. that into porn, whoever figures that yeah. out, that's the next yeah, big thing. Yeah, because how many times have you sure. looked at an image or a video and you're like, what does that other side look like? The only problem, it's going to take eight times longer to shoot it. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got to do, you've got to, it's. I feel like you got, you got to do like gang yeah. stuff. you got to have mean, a lot I of things going on. I was going to say, talking to the mic, because I can't even hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. This one was from. 
Yeah. No, you don't need to do gangbang stuff. You could do one girl in a room. She could be showering, and you're going to be able to either see her. Sorry about you're that. You're going to be able to even either. Wow. You're going to be able to see her from uh, uh, from outside the shower, or you could go into the shower with yeah. her, or you could uh, sit down in the shower. You yeah. can look at her from above. And it's 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 insane. And then there's things going on all around you. So if there's like. A girl behind you, you can literally turn around, and sh and it's yeah. just it's. It's like that yeah. game. Uh, you remember The Sims, yeah. where you like controlled the whole environment. Yeah, yeah. You could you could just add stuff everywhere, like incorporate that into porn. Shit, that was out like what ten years ago. I, I think by like two thousand twenty, I think we're gonna see more of the the virtual reality like, in good quality and stuff. Because I feel like the yeah. quality isn't there yet with all the uh, the cameras and stuff. It's kind of blurry, kind of like. By the time you compress it down and it gets to the consumer, it's just, it's not really that great of a The image. budget's going to be yeah. different, too, though. Plus Absolutely. The plus, consumer, uh, to buy the, the products to be able to view it is, all, is pretty expensive. You right. Know? That's so going to just give it like away. It's like buying a game system, now you got to buy the games for it and all that stuff. Yeah. But I definitely think that moving forward is probably going to be the biggest thing in the next, like, five years. And they'll, they'll shoot every popular concept uh, that porn has ever done. Why are you talking without a mic in there? In your face, come on. Oh, that's close enough. There you go. But uh, it's, yeah, every popular porn Wait. concept uh, that we all loved, you know, they'll probably reshoot it and we'll be able to enjoy it once again. All right, L listen, guys, we are uh, live uh, on the air right now at Brother Love Radio at WBKVegasRadio.com. We're sitting here with a panel of awesome guests uh, and uh, Preston Parker, who has just been gracious enough to hang out with us um poor star veteran and a good friend of all of ours i'm going to take a break right now we're going to put on a song by liz flair called flower and you know what i like about this song is that you got a popular artist just being horny as fuck and you know it's refreshing to hear a female sing about fucking yeah. and so let's let me turn this up we're going to take a break drink some beer and chill out las vegas porn time brother love radio.com and I am Brother Love, your host, my co-host, Shahe Brown, is around here somewhere chilling out. Yeah, and yeah. I have a panel of awesome characters from the Porn Pros crew. Mm, I also right. got uh, Preston Parker here, one of the OGs from the East Coast, hanging out. So uh, thank you very much, Preston. A uh, good friend of mine, and uh, we're all living in Vegas now. So uh, we have a request from the youngest member of the panel today, Matt Dreads. And his request was to talk about some disgusting things that happen on set. Or so, funny. Or, or funny. funny. Look, you know. Let's start with disgusting. Let's, let's be yeah. real, you know. We're talking about human anatomy and some funky shit that happens. I already have you know? my story. So and it happened on your set. That's, I, I want to hear it. I was PAing it. Two new girls fucking, they were doing, one was in Mish, the other was in Doggy. Her ass right above her. And uh, we get into the sex, the guy's fucking her Doggy, and all of a sudden he pulls out. All this juice. Oh, I don't want to hear this. Goes into the girl's mouth on the fish. I can't well, deal with this. I come want to hear it on my uh, time off. Uh, let's, let's talk, the fans want to hear it though. <laughs> yeah. This and it had, it had hard. that smell. Oh know, like, man. And it was a freaking douche. This girl actually used the like winter fresh douche. And uh, I went into the other girl's mouth. And I mean, me and Daniel, I think. Do you remember yeah. that, Daniel? Yes. It, it, it uh -huh. was like the perfect. When you pulled out and it went right in this girl's mouth. How's it perfect? And that shit, that shit stinks. Those the inside of those, especially if you get the scented ones. Vinegar. It was, it was, it was, it was foul. It was gross. Let's just say that. Yeah, that was within my first two months in the business. Huh? That story always stuck with me. So as a professional, and none of us here fuck on camera except for Preston. That's it's his job. One of his many jobs. Um, how do you deal? This is a fan question. It's a fan. How do you deal with female hygiene and, and, and make it through a scene, period? How, how does that work? Well, luckily, you know, from back in the days, things have gotten a lot better. Okay. Seems like the girls are a lot cleaner than they used to be. That's for sure. Especially when I was in Miami because we didn't fly porn stars in. Okay. We only shot girls that we found on the street. Like, we, I'd be at a movie. I have a day off after like 13 straight days, and I get a phone call. We found a girl. You need to fuck her three times today. Come on in. I'm like, all right, shit. What does she look like? I'm not even you know? supposed to be here today. I don't. I don't even know how you fuck some of these girls sometimes, because I see them and I'm like, wow. That's like, why I'm a you, professional. I, I know. I mean, 
you see these girls and they're like freaking ugly. Yeah. Not, not ugly, ugly but fuck. But you gotta Whoa. get a boner to that. See, then you're not yeah. you're not watching it for the right thing. That's see? You get it's about the fetish. Okay, okay. You know, maybe she she might she might not look the way you like, but she might have the most beautiful ass on the planet. No, the sometimes best, best there's pussy. none of the above. And she's still ugly as fuck to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's, that's coming from an editor. That's coming from a guy that has to sit there for hours on end and just edit the shit out of a video. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. But I love women, though. So I, I know an ugly woman when I see one. You know what I'm saying? When I see an ugly woman... And now when I see a beautiful woman, my reactions are totally different. Like, best to believe the outcomes are going to always be different between an ugly chick and a beautiful chick because that's just what I was born with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. but see, what, what's ugly to you isn't necessarily ugly. What's beautiful to you isn't necessarily beautiful. True. You just got to, you got to, you're not quite at the level of understanding that it is what it is. Enjoy for what it is. Sometimes these girls that you think are not right, they come on set like they just won a prize, and they just, they're some of the best fucks. They're better than some of the girls that come on set and you gotta deal with their shit just because they know they got it going on. And they're not always fun to fuck. I'd rather fuck a cool girl than a hot girl. Yes, amen to that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, yeah, I, I gotta that. deal with a, a hot girl the whole Now, she's hot and she's cool. Right. It's yeah. like, it's a great day. Right. right. You know? What but about a fat girl? most of. What about a fat girl? Hey. Like a cool girl. I said, what, like BBW status? Hey, BBW is right, hot. You're, wait, wait, you're, hot. you're okay. acting like that's, yeah. like that's an issue. I got some fat girls. That's just a new fetish. This guy wants yeah. to talk about nasty shit coming out of girls' pussy. Of course. And, and, and of course. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I get what you're saying, how you can, you know, you just, you know every, girl, girl, every woman, woman has, a, has, they have womanly features, you know, and you find that one feature, you know, that every, you know, and you, you focus on that if there's nothing else. That's right. That's you right. You know, but for you, I, you know, I'm on set. I, I can find ten scenes. wrongs. I can find yeah. ten wrongs and one right. Right. And a girl and get my job done. Yeah, but there's something said that, that makes you, you know, uh, different than most guys to, you know, be able to do this day in, day out where some, I, of, these, I like some of these girls, you know, it's like, you know. I probably need therapy. Wow. Yeah. I, I think that, um, <laughs> you know, number one, we touched on them, a lot of sub- subjects right in this last couple minutes, but going back to the amateur girl and, and hygiene, you know, uh, what Preston was talking about to the fans out there is that a lot of the young girls, they are young, they don't really know how to take care of themselves on a professional level, and if they do make it through the first six months, which is like, to me, sex boot camp for a girl, um, you know, they come out on top, you know, and most of the guys have patience, the, the directors have patience, the owners have patience, some of the male performers that are, have been in the business can, can, can teach some of these girls some, some things about their vaginas that they may not know personally. Um, and then Preston said a couple things that we're arguing about in here about uh, the variety, the BBWs, the not so pretty girls, the girls that are cooler, and the girls that are hot but they're kind of cunty. Okay, so the thing about the porn star, male or female, to me that makes them more special. And these are the ones that shine, like the Adriana Chechicks, you know, um, and this is a different kind. This is a different kind of girl than a. Uh, uh, a contract girl. A contract girl might be the same, but they may be locked in. A porn star has the ability to find something special about the person that they are fucking and keen on that and rock a scene. So whether the girl is fat, whether the girl is this, whether the girl is that, a porn star can find, hey, we maybe we have chemistry, maybe there's a good kiss, maybe she has great tits, maybe she has a big fat pussy. Maybe her ass is off, off the chain. Maybe there's something about her that a porn star can dig into his head or her head to make this scene come off the hook. Or maybe they're just an ego fucking maniac and they just want to fuck the shit out of whoever they're fucking and come, come about on top. And as a director and PAs that we've all been on set and as an editor, we appreciate the people that come to play. Absolutely. Okay. And that is definitely a very hard skill to obtain for a male performer. Well, Preston came about with, 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 with why he impressed 
the directors and the camera people when he did was because in those days, uh, like today, you don't, no one gives a fuck about the, a new male performer, okay? Period. Okay? To earn your stripes as a male performer is fucking hard to do. You need to be around. You need to be visible. You need to come with the heart on. You need somebody to give you a break because no one wants to risk four to five thousand dollars minimum on a set with a fucking woodless wonder. No one gives a shit about if you have a big, big dick. That's a plus. But if you, I'd rather have a five inch dick that gets hard and can fuck a chick than a twenty inch noodle. Okay. So Preston came on. He shined. He had a heart on. There's a similar story with a good friend of mine, you know, uh, Bruce Fencher, who, who, who persevered similarly. You know, um, I've been on Shane's World sets. Uh, college invasions where you see a young guy just fucking around. He doesn't know any better that he's not supposed to get a hard on. And he's acting like a young Ron Jeremy or something funny. And it's cool because this young kid with a normal average penis and who's just not taking care of himself is able to rock himself at a porn star. This old Shane's real shit. But, uh, I mean, that's why you see the same 20 guys in most of the porn yeah, out know, there. It's not easy, you know. They're, I think on the East Coast, there's a group, I'm not sure, maybe Preston, you can tell me about this. Because I, I hear it from the West Coast girls. There's some site in the East Coast where they bring in a lot of new guys, and the West Coast girls talk about getting flown out there, and they either bust too soon or they can't get hard. I mean, I would think that's kind of a hazing site, to be honest with you, because that can be kind of funny when you're just clowning average guys. You know, I mean, I, I'm not sure, but well, there's there's five companies on okay. the East Coast, and okay. you know who they are. Yeah, and it's the same okay. across the board. You know, like uh, college dorms, right. things like that. You know, they, they, they want fresh guys. Yeah. They want new, brand new faces, young college looking kids. Right. And then, um, you know, and, and really the hard on doesn't matter. Okay. See, that's the thing, that's the difference between the East Coast and the West Coast. You know, the East, I, I would always use guys that would fail. Okay. Just because it made me laugh. Okay. But then you keep them on, you know, you, you keep bringing them back and you give them other jobs. Like, hey, man, you got a job on the East Coast, so I'm just... There we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be, you, I'll be a minute man. If, if, I get to fuck a hot girl. Why if not? you can't... You know, Almost fuck a hot girl. <laughs> if you can't Shit. get... If Three you can, pumps does not count. If you well, I mean, you can say you fuck her, I guess, right? You gonna let me finish? Hold on, let, let Preston get the word in. <laughs> no, 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 it's just... It, if. It's just different now. See, everything is cookie cutter. They want a video shot yeah. and dumped on a website, and they want the dick to go in the pussy, and then they want the cum shot, and then you're good. Right. Where I never shot like that, growing like start now. Yeah. You know, if a guy failed, I'd pull my cock out myself and finish the scene, or we'd go get another guy. But I, I would, I would always include them. Just because it was fun. I don't know. It's eventually maybe you can make the young talent like a driver or a production assistant to help you out. Right. Eventually, his fear will go away. Whether it's a guy holding a camera or like the girls making him nervous. And the next thing you know, that's it. The guy will never have trouble getting hard again. Right. It sounds like, uh, you know, in the past there, it was more, you were having more fun. And like, uh, kind of like doing the stories, like if I was to do a porn, this is what I would do, you know, uh, when you joke around with your friends. You know, that's, that's kind of like, uh, you know, what it sounds like uh, the past was, where now it's like more scripted and structured. Is that the case? Yeah, it's like a copycat, you know, lead. It's like the business is all about just pumping out scenes. And, you know, if somebody came out with a new idea, yeah before they could show the world because they don't have like the traffic or like the, uh, you know, they can't show it, they can't put it on everyone's computer. A big company will take it, steal it, and then they'll just, they'll create their own style of it. Right. And it'll get hot. But no company's gonna take the time to spend the money to try and think of a new idea. Yeah, a lot of the porn I see now, I feel like it's more quantity over quality. Like, scene, 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 new girl, new girl, new girl. Like, they're not, the budget's just, aren't there anymore, you know? Well, They're everything's polluted. Three to five thousand a scene. Back in the day, you couldn't steal it. Right. You couldn't steal it off of, you can't pirate it out, you know, of a, of a website. And you didn't have the selection you have. The, the companies that really screwed it up for us were all the, 
the tube sites. Yes. You know, yep. like, like it's all free. And you know, those are the sites I go to, sadly. I don't, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, I can me find too. anything I want. Right. You know? So the people that are still paying are like those people that just want the good quality shit. They know for 30 bucks they can get 20 updates a, a month on any fetish that they want. And they don't, they don't mind spending the money because they have it. Right. You know, but a lot of people don't have it. They don't need it. They can go to free sites. Yeah, I was just going to chime in because I'm the young dumb. I've never paid for it. And quite never. Frankly, never. When I started working in it, I was like, I can't believe these companies still make money because there's so much free stuff out there. There's money to be made. I mean, I, yeah, obviously, because yeah. we're all still, you know, employed, so. Do you know um, when, you know, my boss gave us the opportunity to ask him any question for a week because he had to sit with us because another manager was out? The first question I asked was, how do you guys make money in a world where porn is free? And he just gave me a basic answer, and he couldn't even finish it, you know what I'm saying? Because I was just like, you know, how do you sell water to a whale? I asked him that too. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, how do you take a bo water bottle to a whale that's already in water and say, hey, I got this fire shit. I want you to buy this shit. You know what I'm saying? How do you do that? The answer he gave me was really not enough. It was just really broad, like, you know, be unique, creative, you know, uh, something that just stands out out of everything that was like that's to me it's a basic answer that's not answering why or how you guys are making money because well, it has the world nothing to do with that man it's all marketing and advertising you know I, I see the cookie cutter stuff too and uh you know well, one thing i think uh that is off in the business is uh you know even the best productions sometimes seem like a b movie you know um i see like there should be more creativity and more uh, uh, production value, you know, and uh, you know, and some of the st stuff that, that is out there, you know, uh, it kind of disappoints me sometimes when you see these uh, big things that are supposed to be all big, and then you, then you watch it, and it's like, oh man. Did you, did you ever, growing up, did you ever have like a a, a set of a, either a CDs of songs of albums of like your favorite like musicians? And you just you just had to have the set yes. like next to your uh, uh, whatever your yes. CD player, or you had like a set of movies, yeah. you know, and then you just had them all nicely up up on the rack, yes. looking nice. Well, and you don't need to do that because you know you can now download it. Right. Well, some people still want to do it. Some people want to buy it right. so they can have it in their house and put it in any time they want. And then, you know, now the discs are maybe Blu-ray or something like right. that. You know, it's the same with porn, you know? Some people are doing good in life, and they just, they want good quality shit. And it's not gonna hurt them to pay 30 bucks a month for something that they get the girls that they want every single time, the fetish that they want every single time. And they they feel a little bit maybe, uh, I don't know, they feel a little bit more up than having to maybe go to a free site. They, they You know what I mean? It feels good to go and, it's like taking your woman out. Right, your you know, comments are heard. Too. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just you want to spend that little extra bit, even though you sh you probably don't need to. It just feels nice. And I think what Preston's talking about is human nature. We all want to buy things if we have a little bit of extra money. Cool. Yes, get the collection or whatever. You know, the trailer didn't do it for you on Pornhub, which is a tube site, the the enemy, the nemesis of money makers in the business. And I'm not hating on Pornhub. I I go there all the time and. Uh, I think that was brought to my attention by some of the people that I work with is that, you know, by human nature, people want to spend money. Okay, and if you've got a brand new credit card, if you've got a credit line, then you, you want to break that credit line. And, and most of the time, or a lot of the time, it might be a new porn site. You know, whether, they, whether we have the opinion of it's stale or not, guess what? Some young person that's just coming up doesn't see it the same as we do. Uh, and, the, and then the old timers also as well, they might be like, hey, yeah, I can get a bunch of free shit. Uh, Preston said it earlier, new pussy. You know, we all cheat on our wives or cheat on our girlfriends or we look forward to the next Playboy magazine if you're talking about the 60s, 70s, and 80s or the DVD number 53, whatever the fuck it is, you know, because you, you, you need the new. Because after you masturbate to this girl or whatever, five or six times, you know, I'm done. Or maybe you have your favorite, but guess what? The favorite's not doing it for me tonight, so I'm surfing the net and I'm bored in fucking tears. But, man, the impulse buy is this one chick at this one site. 
is doing it for me. Now I got to see all her scenes. Maybe yeah. she's a contract girl, you know, especially with a social media or whatever. With social media, uh, uh, a lot more people are are able to reach, you know, their favorite porn actors, right. you know, and uh, you know, so if uh, you know someone has a lot more scenes of them, you know. They're definitely gonna subscribe. You know? I look at the free sites kind of like I look at Netflix. Yeah. You know, it's not that expensive. It's like seven bucks a month. But have you ever been on Netflix and you just can't find anything to watch? Absolutely. You got fucking but ten thousand movies to choose from, and you still can't find one that you want to watch. Yeah, and it's something you're not gonna cancel for eight dollars a month, like. So you know what I did? You know what I did last point. night? I spent six bucks and I rented Martian. It was a fucking great movie. Okay. You know, I could afford it, right. and it felt good. Pay a little money and get a movie that's, you know, brand new that you can't get on Netflix. It's the same thing with porn. You know, and the percentages aren't what they were 10 years ago. You know what I mean? It's that free money's not coming in like it used to. Right. That heavy set of money isn't what it used to be. And you, you just have to be an innovator these days. Like, get the trends start the site, the next site to blow up, because, you know, we, uh, uh, going back to the impulse stuff, I mean, that all is, porn is just an impulse purchase, you know, you see the girl, here's my credit card, game over, you know, the companies win, because most of the time they're not going to cancel, and uh, with these tube sites, I mean, look at YouTube, you know, they thought YouTube was going to kill everything, it might be helping the industry, the porn hubs, don't you think, because some of these videos out there, I'm sure, Daniel, you have videos that have, you too, I mean, multi-million views. That's people seeing your stuff. They may not be paying for it, but that's so many people seeing you on a daily basis. I mean, you're pretty much like a celebrity. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let, me get, I mean, let me do something. Let me, let me do, okay. get a segue here. i got to do a station identification and all that. We're at Brother Love Radio. We're live on the air Saturday mornings from 2 to 4 a.m. at uh, WBKEVegasRadio.com. And don't forget to check out my friend uh, DJ Kid, host of Island Vibes, live every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. Also, I got to give a shout out to Ozzy Morales of BMFApparel.com, who hooked us up with our T-shirts last week, and then my good friend. Uh, let me let me let me read here real quick. Ronald Eugenio of Las Vegas Custom Printing.com, who made a sick ass four by six banner of the Brother Love logo, which I attached the WBKE Vegas logo on it as well. Vegas Radio. So shout out to those guys. Um, don't forget to follow our social media, Twitter, Brother Love XXX. We got a Tumblr page, Brother Love XXX, Instagram, Brother Love Radio, uh, Pinterest, Brother Love XXX, and Facebook, Brother Love Official. So I want to get away from the business and get back to the stories. Um, we only have a few more minutes, you guys, and uh, Preston Parker here has a million stories. I, I, and I want to ask him about the beginning of Dancing Bear. I think that was your site, from what I understand. That was uh, that was actually right towards the end of me just uh, okay. calling it quits with the East Coast. Okay. Yeah, Dancing Bear was an idea that Bang Bros thought of, uh, where you you uh, you put a, a couple girls that are going to be talent for the day, okay. porn stars. You put them in a crowd of like forty or fifty girls, of just regular extras, just. Uh, Obviously, you need a budget for that. Yes. But we had the budget. So, you know, you have a dancing bear coming out, like kind of like a strip club, wearing a, 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 a bear outfit, you know, and then he, he, uh, he strips down like a stripper, and then you see all these girls in the crowd, and then next thing you know, you know, one of them, the crowd's blowing them, you know, starts grabbing them. You know, the fun part about it was a lot of these girls that were just extras, you know, we threw in there that, you know, if you decide to do anything else, you'll definitely get compensated for it. Here's your paperwork. And before you know it, you know, one girl just has to grab a, a guy's cock. Yeah. And then her girlfriend's like, well, if you're going to do it, you know, then I'm going to suck it. And then before you know it, you don't know who in the crowd is going gonna, is gonna to be a part of it. And it, it, it turned out to be successful. Good for Ben Gross. Yeah. I, I never heard of that. So you you actually wore a, a, a bear suit? Well, I didn't, but okay. uh, but the, uh, a male the, performer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah there. Was, you know, every every episode was a little different. You know, sometimes you have four or five dancers. I mean, we had as many as eighty to a hundred extras one scene. That's you incredible. Know, and all the girls, you know, in Miami, you get Dominicans, you get 
you know, Cuban or Puerto Rican, you get you know, just these beautiful Latin girls. You know, you get people that are coming just because they need the money. Right. As an extra. How much does that pay? 50 bucks or something? No, Nick? I mean, it was probably 100 but, you know, it started to add up when girls would, you know, do more stuff. Right. Before you know it, it was an expensive scene. But n nobody else had what it took to do that. Right. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool. I did the same thing with Bang Bus. You know, I would, uh... There was a time when I would pick up a girl on the street and she didn't know what was going on and then we would, I'd be a little flirty or whatever and uh, I would hint to the driver to drive to the office because we, we need to do fucking legal work. Yes. We're going to use her. But uh, money talks and some of these girls were like, sure. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so it worked out. But it got to the point where... Man, I couldn't show anybody on the street anymore. I couldn't, like, use people that didn't sign legal work anymore. Okay. Like, it, it got difficult. So, you know, we thought of the idea of getting a bunch of extras and right. setting it all up. And it was a longer day, but nobody could tell a difference. Right. It, it actually turned out to be even better, because I could talk a lot more shit, and I could... You know, I can fuck with people a little bit more because I'm, I'm paying them, you know. Right. I'm just, it is what it is. Don't take it personal. But, uh, Do you have a crazy story about someone who uh, didn't uh, exactly, or maybe was shocked by when you asked them what was going on, after you told them what was going on? Like, I shouldn't be saying this, but I have, a, I have a, a box of cassettes because back in the day, that's what the cameras were. Right. And, uh... uh yeah, no one will ever see those videos because they uh, they were not allowed to be put on on the internet. But those are the best stories by far. You just whip them out. What do you get bored? <laughs> You're sitting at your house. I'll bring back some old memories. You ever do that? Oh yeah. I mean, obviously yeah. you kept them, so you, you still I mean, have to use them. If you them. knew, if you knew the videos, I can, I can't even tell you. It's it's pretty crazy, and and it's stupid too because some of the reasons we couldn't put it on the internet wasn't anything wrong. Right. We just didn't have, like, complete... We didn't do the legal work correctly. Right. Like maybe we didn't cross the T or something. You know, and I'm like, dude, we gotta figure... I mean, I... I remember flying to a different state just to have a girl finish her legal work and paying her more, and she didn't... She decided she didn't want to do that. Wow. So I'm driving oh, around the country for no reason. Yeah. You know, but... No, I, I've got a lot of good stories, I'm sure. I mean, some I'd like to forget. But I remember one video where I asked a girl if she could swim because I'm going to push her in the canal and we're going to haul ass. We'll come pick her up later. It's, it's the ending of the bang bus. Right. Girl gets cum on her face. We drive up by, like, a canal. She, you know, goes to wipe her face, and I push her in and, and haul ass. Well, on the way back, you know, she's soaking wet from head to toe. And she told me, when you asked me if I could swim, you didn't ask me if I could swim with fucking shoes on. So, like, you know, like, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. She had those stripper, you know, six-inch heels. Yeah. She didn't think to take those shoes off while she was drowning in the water or anything like that. I guess. It was like having cement, <laughs> cement shoes. She was about so, to sleep with the fishes. I uh, there was there was one time, probably the scariest thing that I almost did was uh, we were out by the Everglades. Okay. And I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good about specifics and making sure everything is done right, just so uh, I cover my ass when it comes to making sure that the film whatever video has a beginning, okay. a middle, and an end, so everything is there. Right. And. Um, I'm looking around the canal. I don't know why I'm looking around, but I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to push you in. Uh, and, and, and then we're going to haul ass and we'll come pick you up later, whatever. Anyway, we, we go to do the video, and I go to push her in, and I swear to you, I see a seven-foot alligator swimming in the canal. And I thought to myself, I almost pushed her in that shit. Like, I almost pushed her in the canal. And there's a fucking alligator in there. 
And I mean, it, it's it's a real de- it's yeah, a yeah. real serious yeah. situation here. Like, wh- you know, what if the alligator would have been ten seconds later? Should have gotten eaten up. Right. So that was stupid. You would have just kept driving. No, how I would have. I would have been like, I'm out of here. Yo, how crazy would <laughs> that, that be? Paperboard? If you're just out there doing the scene, and she knows what's going on, you push her in, and. As you're coming back, she's beating mom. Oh, no, no, like, no. Like, how <laughs> fucking sick would that be, man? No, oh, no, that would, yeah. that would be insane. If you came back, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have felt the same way. Uh, you know, on set with uh, fearing for your life and safety with some of these women that you've been with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, when you shoot from the hip, man, anything can happen. And I think that's what made Bang Bus so hot. Yeah. Let's talk about shooting from the cock. You have a miracle pop. But let, let's, let, let's let that be known. If, if you're a fan and you watch porn and you know Preston Parker, you know that uh, his pop shot is uh, an unusually long pop shot. The average man can't come close. Did you, you know, growing up, did you know that this was a... Uh, 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 an unusual phenomenon, and then uh, going into porn when you're blasting girls in the face and, and hosing them down. Now, I'm going to be honest. I laugh my ass off every time you bust a nut in the face. And, Me too. And I, yes. I think it's Most the greatest thing on do. earth. And I think usually after the second stream, when they're oh. calming down and they just it, know it's, it's over, over. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, yeah. there's several more to come. Yeah. <laughs> And they'll be like, talk about that. I mean, you know, that, don't yeah. get it in my eye. I'm, I'm fanboying <laughs> it up now, so you, you whole... gotta let the fans know and me know and the rest of the gang. You know, that's, that's, I, I need that's to come out. I need to come out with a miracle pill. You okay, know? yeah, you do. Even though I've never used one. Right. You know, I need yeah. to come out with something. Just endorse it and lie and, yeah, you'll yeah. put that money in your pocket. Yeah, because everyone I, has. I don't, have any, I don't have any secrets or anything. I don't know what it is. Right. I, I was... I was given a big load, and I, I constantly shoot big loads, and it, it is what it is. Yeah. And it, I guess it helps my cause. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, you and Peter. So Jones. he's got a big cock, and he's got a big load, <laughs> and he's got no problem getting hard. You know, this is a, you know, you know. That's a lot of kids, and, man. And, True and porn he, star. And he can fuck anybody at any time, all born. the way through. So, yeah. It's your calling. I'd, I'd say kids. that's the biggest compliment I've ever had from a director is that oh shit Preston's here we'll get done on time. <laughs> yeah, we can. I, from my experience, we've always been able to rely on you, and you know after seeing so many guys fail, and you know you, you get some guys you don't know, and it's like yeah, I'm gonna be here all day. <laughs> so, I mean, I, even as an editor, I would say you know I've I've put slow motion on some of your pops just because it was that spectacular. You know what I'm saying like. Blind in the chick's vision. Pablo Picasso, I mean, just penis. Un- unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm on a lot of girls' no list because of that. Of course. I you mean, know, it's like, don't get in my eye while your your eyes are about 30% of your face. <laughs> and, uh, once I'm done with your entire face, the rest is just going to go into your eyes. So, I, you know, it's a face shot. It's called a money shot for a reason. I, yeah, it I'm is. Getting, I'm getting paid here. Sorry. And the girl, by the way, gentlemen and, and ladies that are on the line, are getting paid twice as much as him. So, you know what? To, to eat a fucking Preston Parker and pop shot for the last 30 seconds of the scene, uh, that should be no problem coming from where the ladies are. Because well, you figure 20% of, the, uh, uh, of what they're getting paid is to do the scene. 80% is to take the pop shot. In a, in a there is definitely some sort of percentage of that. You know, I don't know what it is, but that's one hell of a truth. <laughs> as, as production too, it's always porn nice science. To know. You know how they got sports science? We got to do porn science. Porn science. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to know that uh, you're going to get science. evidence. You're going to get that shot. Science. Well, if you have a director like Daniel, who uh, you know, I get on set and he tells me right away, "Don't aim for the face, aim for the eyes." <laughs> That's the, that, the, the, the girl's right been. Eye. She's been on bad behavior, and, and yeah, you know. Sorry, yeah, that's guys. funny. I'm yeah. having a bad day. Yeah, now. that's shit I that, that I don't answer. know. That's shit that I don't know. And when I see some shit, I just laugh. At shit, because she'd be blind. You know, shit. nobody on a porn set <laughs> is trying to be malicious, but when you when a girl comes up and she's a dick, bam. Like you know, she's a bitch, but no, she's a dick or she's an asshole. Then yeah, you know, fuck her. You know, I mean, because we're all there in the same boat, and I'm not trying to be. I, look, brother love is all about love. 
<laughs> but sometimes girls will, will, will press some buttons here, you know. And you know, I, I don't get anything out of it. I mean, I, I, you know, even years ago, 12 years ago when I started, yeah. like when I was told to come on a girl's face, <laughs> I mean, I, I was still young. I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. Like, I'll come on her face, but I, I don't know what anybody likes about it. I like it now. I mean, right. I get it, you know. I, it, it's a masculinity thing. You want to own a girl. You know, that's There's what it is. definitely that. But, I, it's the fantasy factor. But right? I, I didn't have sex with girls, you know, and right. then come in their face. It, it just, it, I didn't do that. Yeah, it's not but, your everyday thing. Like, I mean, oh, I mean, yeah, now I'm sure kids, kids are doing it because they have porn in their phone and they, you know, they're up to today. But back then, no. I mean, I don't get anything out of it, but it yeah. is what it is. And it is kind of funny when it goes in the nose and then it comes out of the mouth. It's like, it's hilarious. Or right in the eye and she's got red eyes. Or they gag. Get oh, that by wow. yeah. So that actually, that question was asked to me and you know, there's the machismo behind it and etc. I did a couple of lectures at UC Irvine several years back. And one was very successful and one I ended up getting booed off stage. You never know. And I was actually warned by Mr. Pete that that could happen. You know, uh, but one of the girls brought up the topic of did I feel that uh, was the, the was the pop shot, the facial uh, degradation type of thing. And you know, my, my answer to her at the time, and it still stands to this day, is it depends upon where you stand with a man's cum, you know, and a man's orgasm, to be quite honest. I think the first visible pop shot on the face was, I think, a movie called Behind the Green Door, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that that pop shot was um, because the, the female wanted to be showered by the man's orgasm. And I think there's a, I think that is the dragon that most guys are chasing if you're trying to come in a girl's face. Because like Preston said, there's really no pleasure in that for a guy. I mean, personally to me, I'd rather come deep in a girl's pussy yes, or in sir. a girl's ass. It goes in a hole. And it's or the throat. That's luxury. Yeah, or in the throat. Don't she's forget the throat. Doing the blowjob and, and finishing the job. You know, but, you know, as guys, you know, if we're eating pussy, you know, Part of the things that we like to do is when a girl comes on her mouth, you know, and it's not a typically visible, you know, pop shot, but technically I would imagine that she's probably leaking more bodily fluid throughout her, you know, sex experience than the teaspoonful of cum that the average man, I'm not talking about the gallon <laughs> bottle that we yeah. need to fucking for Preston Parker over here, but I think that's where the facial comes from, and, and, and if, if you're into the facial as a female because you want to be showered by your man's organ, respect on that, you know. Um, and if you're a guy that, you know, you're, you're being machismo and you're running your girl, respect to that too, because I know from experience, most girls like to be owned. It's, there's a time and place for making love, but then guess what? Most of these girls, if you don't know how to do it, guys, you better learn quickly. Most of the girls need to be fucked, okay? Whether she's a girlfriend or not, they need to get their aggression out. Amen. So figure that out, guys, because that's going to be your number one hurdle. If you're a romance guy, at some point you're going to learn how to, have to learn how to choke her. So I'm just saying, watch choker, the porn. Not choker, choker to kill her. The, the, the not not choker to kill her. The romantic choker, joke. have her eyes roll back in the back of her head, etc. We are going to take a potty break because my, my bladder is filled with urine right now. And we're going to put on a song uh, called She Loves My Cock. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Le gusta mi what? I'd like to know, like, what would be, do you have, like, a favorite scene or something that you've done? I don't look at anything, anything. Who wants to song now? You know what I look at? Girls I've had a good time with. You know, as Bronze and Gomez and I, we're, we're good friends. Plus, you know, she, she's one of my top. Who's that girl you were with the other day? You know, was weird. You guys, like, one girl? Oh, is she an industry girl? Oh, yeah, that's too hot. She's a Russian. She did look Russian. Yeah, she's Russian. She's huge for man. Well, it's like all those, like, yeah, the solo girls, man. They're all, like, Ukrainian Russian, man. She's cool as well. See how long it's going to be on? How many minutes? It's still a little bit of a one of the friends. I'm going to go, I'll be better tomorrow. Where would you say that? I don't know, but I'm going to figure that out quickly. One of these seconds, but I'm out. I've been asked a couple of times, but I didn't. 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 I didn I'm, I'm on I'm yeah. trying to trick it down to see what's going on.
Oh, Francis, I was going to ask you, uh, do you do, do you do side work, like editing? Of course. Um, I know tons of like artists that do like music video type shit. What would be your rate on that? Because I know I see you edit those exotics are sick, man. You, you know how to like edit to the beat and shit. It's all music video. Right. Because I've shot like five minutes. Oh, yes. uh, what? That's how I like to edit. Like I can't work on a project that's an hour long. Right. Because I almost was an editor for Warner Bros. Like when I first came on, they were like asking me because I you know done the Final Cut seven yeah. for a couple years. Right. But now you're on shit, what, you're on X? X. But yeah, what, what would be your rate on that, like a video? If you've got a three to five minute video. Um, I mean, what do you think? I mean... Probably like three to five hundred? Shit, three hundred would work. Cool, cool. You know what I'm it's saying? good to know, because I, uh, I'd probably... I was going to shoot one here, but I don't want to edit it. Shit, <laughs> I'm down with But i got to be feeling the song. Like, when I do a music right, video, i got to feel the song or I don't want to do it. Right. But, uh... That's what I... That's what I... Because I shoot music videos, too. And, um, I tell artists all the time, choose the best song on your fucking CD. Because I'll you know listen to it for three days. I'm going to have to jam listening to right, it. Right, yeah, getting, like, too. visualizing what I'm going to do. But I don't really script shit, man. That's not I got style. I got storyboards. Oh, you storyboarded? Yeah, yeah. I storyboarded. Well, I'll be like, okay, we're going to do this verse here, this verse here, right. all that sort of stuff. I storyboarded only because I got I got uh, somebody shooting in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? While, like, while I'm out here, he's shooting in Chicago. But, you know, Chicago is where most of the What's artists... What's his name? Random shit. Randy. Randy. Yeah. I know. He, he's only been doing it for a year and a half. My yeah. friend in Chicago, uh, well, friend of a friend. Uh-huh. He has a pretty popular YouTube channel. Oh, what he, what he goes, oh, Josh Davis oh. or something. But dude, his fucking so, okay, Thank you, John. Hilarious. Sound good, brother. Love. What do you want to talk? You got about? a voice for radio, man. Yeah, you're still, he's good at it. You still. You, sometimes you sound nervous, though. You know what I'm saying? That's not how I am. I've never really been on radio. Shit. Yeah, I sound nervous he, he, too. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, well, you. It's you, hard to share. It's not about man. you. It's about this man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, brother. Love. Like, you gotta be more calm. You know, just right. own the shit. You know what I'm saying? It's your shit. Post for a picture here, dude. I like that. I like that. Right here. Don't forget, this is what's behind you. You know what I'm saying? You know? Twitter. Yeah, let me give you my number. Yeah, yeah. I have one sitting. It hasn't been edited yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. All right. Also, oh, documentary. Right, do you want to edit documentary? Dude, I, I went to film school, man. I graduated. Just my microphone. This is Brother Love Radio. From 2 to 4 a.m. on Saturday mornings, spilling off the Friday nights. Those partiers, the midnight masturbators. The Saturday morning sluts and all that. This is a sex show about porno and the behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. We have uh, a great panel of guests here. Today, Aaron Roberts from Porn Pros. We have a world famous uh, Preston Parker standing in front of me, or sitting in front of me. And the young buck, porn director, Matt Dredd from the Porn Pros crew. So, yo, let's talk about girls getting into the industry, you guys. You know, uh, a, a part of the topic that's been coming up a lot of the times in, uh, in, in today's two-hour session is guys and girls making it a plan to be a porn star. You know, and, the, and honestly, the last gal that I dated in the industry, she had wanted to be a porn star since she was 15 years old. And guess what? She became a porn star. So, if there's anything that, you know, the veterans that, that, that are in this room right now can explain to the female performers coming up, the male performers coming up, and the expectations thereof, the expe- expectations... Preston, let's start with you. What do you think it takes to be a female performer today? And how can a young lady make her career last? Well, um, a lot of companies don't want to deal with any bullshit anymore. Like, uh, you know, if you got a lot of issues or if you're a pain in the butt to work with, I mean, it's, you know, the business isn't doing so great that they want to call you back. So the girls that come in with the right attitude, you know, uh, take good care of themselves, hygiene is good, you know, and then they're pretty. Right. Pretty girls, you know, smoking hot. It's, it's, that's it. You know, they could shoot every day. Right. Um, but I think the girls of today are way different than back in the day. Because, I mean, if you're in porn, 
let's say at least 10 years ago, you were in porn because you needed sex, kind of like being a nymphomaniac, like a girl that they use, they use sex as a drug. Where now, it's about national exposure, it's about knowing that you can get your face out there, and it's about money now. Where in the past, I mean, if you're going to do porn, you're going to do porn. It, it, you don't even know what you're going to get paid yet. You're just going to do it because you want to get fucked. Right. Girls today aren't like that. There's a handful, but they're hard to find. Right. What about you, Matt Dreads? Here's a pretty common answer I get. I want to be famous. I don't know if you've experienced that. I mean, we got all these new girls who are like, I want to be the next so-and-so. And I think they do porn because they think that's the fastest track to get there. I mean, do you, do you agree with that a little bit, Daniel? Some of this, you know, like, I want to be so famous, you know, Kim Kardashian is the perfect example of that, you know. Society seemed to have forgotten that she got famous because of a sex date. And I right. think all these girls coming, like these up-and-coming girls, I mean, they're coming right out of high school, and they're just like, I want to be famous, all about me, me, me. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's like... No, that makes a lot of sense, you know, when you see a girl break in between, you know, in between breaks, immediately get to the phone so she can get on, you know, uh, some social, some sort of social media. She'd rather uh, be on Snapchat than socializing. You know, that's a, that's a young person's game now. Before, you know, everybody on set was powwow, and you know, I back in the day, I could tell you this: Asia Carrera was PA in our sets at the at the break of our at the break of our day. I, I you know, I was the PA. You had the hottest Asian girl in the industry helping me break down my set because she didn't want to go home. She was hanging out, chilling. And those you are know? the best girls, the girls that want to be there. Yeah, right. Like, you know, I always hear, hear you giving that talk, Daniel, like, you've got to want to be here, but you're like, the chicks that exceed in this business are the ones that, like, they would do this for free. Like, right. they, they don't care about the money. They're just, you know, downright love sex. And, and they usually do the best. It, I mean, in recent years, there's been a, a large number, more than any ever, time in history of crossover stars. Right. And, you know, they think it's a, like, like Dreads was saying, this is an easy track, you know, but they don't understand that, you know, there's a lot of hard work that comes, you know, with that opportunity. It isn't just going to be handed to you just because you're a pretty face. Absolutely. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. And, you know, I hear that on set, actually, we've all heard you it. Not uh, Preston, give us, give, give us one of your speeches, you know, because I have several speeches that I give to the young ladies. A lot of the times when you're, we're setting up for the pop, you, you, you explain to them, hey, I need you to be still, don't move. If you're chasing it, whatever, you're going to get hit in the eye because you're trying to be respectful. But, you know, these girls do this, that, and the other. Uh, give us a breakdown of, like, of maybe of some of the things that you're, you're tutoring these girls on the fly that they just don't get until it's too late. Yeah, well, the pop shot, you know. Yeah. I mean, unless you want to be there a lot longer. Right. It's one and done. Like, this is it. So you got to make sure that. The director, the cameraman, everybody has a job to do all at one time. If anybody fucks it up, then you gotta do the cum shot again. And that sucks. Right. A lot of times these girls, I mean, they don't want to sit there and take cum in the face. Right. They naturally move, which means then the director has to move, the cameraman has to move, the dude with the cock has to move. It's just, you, you beg these girls to please just don't move. Right. Just stay. Let me just come all over your face. And at least try and, and look like you, you're enjoying it. You know, some, but some girls do enjoy it, believe it or not. Some yes, girls yeah, do enjoy it. As, as what he was saying right now, um, you know, as a witness of being on set, uh, as far as the production side, we've always as well, you know, told her, look, just stay right here if you don't want it in your eye, if you don't want it, whatever. So there is some coaching involved through experience you kind of know where she's got to be at and sit to you know not get the worst end of it but uh there's been plenty of times where i've 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 seen preston you know kind of be like a little lower and then stay right there project your head up just a little bit <laughs> yeah. if you stay right there you nine out of ten you're avoiding the eye you know what i'm saying <laughs> But once again, when it comes to this pie, you get the first shot, they think it's over, they're moving, and bam, they get the fucking eyeball. But I've, I've, I've personally seen them plenty of times be like, if you stay right here, you got a fucking great chance. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's a, a, a bit of coaching involved. 
when it comes to that. that Sounds that like kicking shot. the field goal. But yeah. it's astounding that, that the number of these girls that don't even, you know, know the facial, you know, what the pop is, you know, uh, they get in this business and, and it's, they didn't like, you know, watch a video or something like to. Well, I'm sure this they, they've all fucked, they've had sex, you know, times before. They're just not, yeah. your average girl is not used to getting fucking shot a load in the face just because. You know what I'm saying? Like, with four people it, standing around. Yeah, it's, you, you know what I'm like, saying? Not yeah. every girl, There's there's been a couple of little nasty ones that like it in the face, and that's cool, but... Your average girl doesn't just get up every day like, yeah, just shoot it straight in my face. You know what well, I'm saying? I'm saying it's common in the business, and uh, I'm just amazed that these girls uh, had no clue that, you know, it was common. Like, well, through that, <laughs> if they're coming into it, they should be like, oh, I, yeah. you know, 90% uh, of the time I'm getting busted in my face. Yeah. Right, I give a couple speeches. One of my one of my speeches is a superhero speech. Yeah, yeah. they have the real name, and then they have their stage name. And the stage name is that alter ego. You're you're breaking off, you know, your Clark Kent outfit, and then you're busting in the Superman mode, which is my superhero speech. And it's basically that the young ladies that are in the business or getting into the business, you don't have to like sex, like we, we you know, like people believe that you do. You don't have to like the pop shot, etc. You don't have to like come. Nobody's going to critique you on that, young ladies. But guess what? When you're in front of the camera and you're putting on the porn persona, then you've got to pronounce put on that porn personality. So Lisa Smith is not Amber Fuckdoll. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you're Amber Fuckdoll, then that's the person you got to be. And uh, for, as far as guys go, I had an opportunity to shoot a couple this week. Um, I'm not going to name names, but the guy uh, was struggling, you know, and his big struggle was keeping the wood, you know, so if you're struggling as a new performer, you got to find your rhythm. If, if you get more than one opportunity, and I'm going to say as, as a male performer, as the pros know, the biggest deal to a director and anybody shooting is giving me a good opening. It doesn't matter if you have a 10-inch dick or a 5-inch dick. If I can see most of your cock, that's more important than burying it balls deep. Um, I want to get back to story time because we're almost out of time. we only got 15 minutes left, guys, and we're sitting here with real famous um, Preston Parker, um, in, on the yeah, panel yeah. today, and uh, Preston, you said your favorite thing of all time was just, you know, it's, people think take it for granted, but it's really simple, but a threesome with two hot hot women, you know, I think this is a good time to give some shout-outs to some ladies. Can you give us your, if there is such a thing, top three three you know songs? Is, I, it, I, is that too much? I can't do that. Okay. And it's not that I don't want to. Okay. It's just that um, I, I just... There's just so many girls that I've shot with, okay. you know, that I've worked with through the years, you know. D do I remember some? Yeah, because they're friends, you okay. know. Gianna Michaels and I were friends. Esperanza Gomez and I were friends. Okay. You know, I shot a lot of girls' first scenes. Um, you know, I'm good friends with Sarah J. Okay. Um, do you guys remember Ashlyn Brooke? Yep, absolutely. All right, well, the first time I met her, we... I was, it was like a weird situation because they're like, look, we've got this girl. She's beautiful. She's probably the prettiest girl we've ever seen. She's not here to shoot porn. She's just here to shoot photos with you. I want you to try your best to like maybe get her to get naked. Okay. Um, whatever footage you bring back would be great. Okay. And we ended up having sex and I shot the whole thing POV. You know, so... Uh, and then next thing you know, she's, you know, she's world class. I mean, she's just, she's so famous. I remember shooting uh, Christy Mack. And this is sad, man, because if you guys know Christy, you know, she had that situation happen with that, with that guy. I don't want to bring it up. But um, anyways, when I first met her, it took hair and makeup like three hours, four hours to get done with her. Because, you know, she has the mohawk. Yeah. She has all the beautiful tattoos. Yeah. Like, when you see Christy, you know, it's like, it, it is who it is. Like, she, you see her, she's smoking. She, right. She'll break your neck just by turning and looking at her. Like, she's amazing. But the site that we had was amateurs. And she was brand new. Right. So we had to cover her mohawk up with more hair. We had to cover all her tattoos and just make her look, I guess, uh, like a girl simple. next door. Right. Wow. You know, and, she, and I'm like, damn, you know, I feel bad for the girl. I'm like, you got so much going on here. 
and mm -hmm. here we are, we're covering all the good stuff. Right. You know, and then she comes out to the West Coast, and it's a wrap. She, you know, she dominates. Yeah. But Sophia D was big. Ava Adams, you know, she was. Uh, she's a she's a big time girl. I remember shooting Diamond Kitty. Uh, one of the biggest scenes was called The Jungle with Rachel Starr. You guys know yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Yeah, that, I shot her first scene. I okay. shot um, Rachel Rocks. Okay. Alexis Texas was yeah. brand new. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted Alexis to change her name to Sexy Lexi because I, I just liked saying Sexy Lexi. Turns out she didn't need to change her name because she's huge now. Yeah. Yes. You know? But um, those are probably... And I'm looking through my phone right now to see... to try and remember because... <laughs> Jane James... You know, when internet came out, was big. Jane, Jane, Jaden James, if you guys know, I mean, she's you know she dated Chuck Liddell for a while, so she she got her fame in different ways. Rebecca Linares, you guys remember her from Spain? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, awesome. You know, so all the girls I really think about are like back in the day. Right. You know, those are the girls that I think made it. And here I'm looking at. I mean, a bunch of girls that I shot that I, I know I shot their first scene just because they, they rolled through Bang Bros first. Right. I don't know if we paid the agents better than anybody else, but I know that, like, we could have made a website with every girl that came through just because it would have sold. Right. You know, instead we just shot them five or six times each and then sent them on their way. But, uh... I don't know what you want me to say, but it's no. been a lot of girls. It's been a lot of girls. I'm sure, there's a song. Are you that okay? Oh, there it is. <laughs> no, that's good, you know, because he's able to reminisce on some of the, the hot babes that have made an impression on him. And, you know, if, if you're making an impression on a, on a real porn star guy, I mean, that says something. Ava Angelina. Yeah. She was big. Yeah. Man, beautiful Mexican girl. Just beautiful. I got a random question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you watch your own porns? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't actually watch much porn at all. I mean, I'll I'll I watch five minute clip of something that I'm thinking about and jerk off and I'm done. <laughs> but, but back in the day when I did watch, it was just the entertainment value. Okay. You know, like Bang Bus, we we might watch the first twenty minutes of it, right. and then once the sex starts, you just turn it off. I mean, it's weird. It's weird being on the other side. Yeah. You know, so. But that's no different, actually. You know, when you guys get it in the editing bay, the humor comes in the in the beginning, unless something random happens in the sex. You know, but that's true. You know, if, I, if, I I got a quick question, not to cut you off, but but like for the editing side, do you guys enjoy like I don't know if you guys remember, but on most of my shit, whenever we would um, you know hit the slate or whatever, I was always like doing stupid ass shit like to you guys I don't know if you guys noticed it too much but I was always doing some stupid shit Maui and I would always laugh from it but I'd be like like I would just you know what I'm saying just like saying what's up to you guys like on the editing side I mean and I would do it like on the slate like cause I would be right in front of that shit and I'd be like yeah what the fuck you know gotta watch out cause it'll turn it into a gift yeah. <laughs> right I mean yeah. Straight up, I mean, you know, doing stuff like that keeps you alive, you know what I'm saying? Especially if the females are uncomfortable and shit, and when they see you having fun, then, you know, it opens them to have fun. So, when I see that type of stuff, it usually I usually see, like, a female that I wouldn't think will perform good, but will perform good because it seems like everybody on the set is having fun, and when they see that, I think they, uh, they draw from it. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we got about three and a half more minutes, fans out there. You know what? We're going to ask uh, Preston Parker because he is a professional. Without like, uh, we're not talking about bad mouthing girls because that's not really the, the topic of my question. It's about how difficult are some of the scenes physically with the expectations of the directors, either yourself as the director or myself or anybody else. I mean, it's a gift when you guys get a bed. We know that you're fucking on a car, you're fucking in an elevator. Can you describe to the fans how difficult some of your scenes are to pull off, maintain a hard on, and and bust that nut? There's got to be some good uh, difficult the, stories. The, the, it's the physical and the mental together at the same time. That's the hard part. 
because there's a lot of shit going on. You know, if you're shooting an outdoor scene and it's humid as hell out, right. I mean, you're 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 being told what to do. You're you're trying to block a lot of things out. You're trying to mentally get into the girl, and you know, and then the, so the physical part is actually not the hard part. It's okay. the mental part, but just trying to stay focused. Okay. You know, I've shot with some girls that I go back and I and I see the girls and I, I don't even know I shot with them because okay. it was. It's sad to say, but after so many yeah. girls, and also having bad days or long days, right. you know, it's, you forget. I saw a video of myself shooting with this girl, and I didn't know it was me at first. And I'm watching, and I'm like, man, that was a bad day, because we had to deal with some shit. Okay. And I'm thinking, man, I didn't enjoy myself with that girl, but I really wish I did. She's hot. But that day, just, the stars just didn't align, you know. I fucked her. Right. I had no problem, but I don't really remember because it was like a stressful day. And then I look at the video and I'm like, damn, dude, she's hot. She's so fucking hot. I wish she was in my bed right now. Right. You know, I wish I would. I... And then you start thinking, I wish that cameras weren't fucking there that day. You know, I wish it was just me and that girl because that girl's hot. And, I, I, and then I start to think I didn't take advantage of the situation. You know, because I let everything else get to me that day. Is it harder to fuck um, in in heat? I mean, you're from Miami, so maybe that's that's a dumb question I'm asking. Or is it harder to fuck when it's cold? You know, what about water? You know, some of the girls complain that you know if you're fucking in a pool, their pussies or whatever. Does, that doesn't. If fit. it's not in a bed, it's annoying. Okay. Fine and yeah. simple. Everything I'll else is a pain in the ass. A couch is okay. A table is fine. But like. If you gotta drive to a location in the middle of something and then there's a highway and then you're fucking underneath the bridge, you know, and all of a sudden the dumbass director sees a, you know, a whale and he thinks it's cool to turn it and see the whale and then come back to... It's like, you know, it's like, you know, that guy's bored, you know? <laughs> he's not... He's more... He's concentrating on a fucking whale that's in the, in the water next to me in Miami. All right, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, one last thing for Preston. Is there anything in the future that we need to be uh, focusing on as far as... I meant dolphin, not a whale. Oh, oh. <laughs> Is that the change shit? I think they're both aliens from what I understand. Yeah, because there's no alien. whaling allowed. <laughs> but anything Plenty coming up for you in the, in, in, in the near future? So Preston Park, anything that we should be looking at? Any, any shout-outs? That you want to give any, any you know, any any girl, any any guy, any football team, you want to see no, any no, no, no. Super Bowl prediction? I want to say like, uh, you know, just watch for the next niche, and I think it's virtual reality. Okay. I think it's going to be big one day soon, and it's going to be fun to watch porn. It really will. Awesome. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. This is Brother Love it, Radio. It, that's a wrap. Uh, WVKEVegasRadio.com every Saturdays two to four. And thank you guys for listening on the air. Justin's about to take it over. And we will see you guys and hear you guys and be with you guys next Saturday. Peace, y'all. Have a good week. Listen to me live every Friday at midnight. <gasps> BrotherLoveRadio.com If you want to be a guest on BrotherLoveRadio.com, find me on Twitter at BrotherLoveXXX.